So what dominates your thoughts? What is it that you think about a lot? What, uh, what occupies your mind? Or better yet, do my thoughts ever become clouded with smutty jokes or immoral fantasies? That's question number five in the self-evaluation section. And I want to address that in today's edition of Transforming the World. Do my thoughts ever become clouded with smutty jokes or immoral fantasies? How do we overcome that? We'll talk about that in just a moment. My name is Pastor Greg and this is Transforming the World. In Philippians 4, 8, the Apostle Paul says this, And now, my dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. You may not know this, but you and I actually create a barrier or a force field around us, if you will. We create a barrier in our life when we surround ourselves with those things that strengthen our faith, purity is easier to achieve when we avoid what is immoral and impure. We become what we permit into our life. Let me just say that again. We become what we permit into our life. Uh, and I'll give you an example of this. I remember counseling a young man once who... Uh, he, he came to me, he says, you know, he, he constantly felt that the devil was after him. And I was a little concerned, you know, um, that can be kind of alarming. Always feeling that the devil was creeping over your shoulder, wanting to watch you stumble and fall. Um, I counseled him. Eventually, I ended up going over to his house to, to do a, for a counseling session. And when I walked into his room, I was alarmed. I discovered that this young man had surrounded himself with the dark things in this life. Uh, on his wall was a uh, spooky poster from the movie Ghost Rider. It's no wonder he felt haunted by the devil. You know, I'd like, look, you need to get rid of these things. Uh, you know, you need to fill your 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 life with whatever is pure, whatever is right, whatever is noble, and you know this this. Of course, you're going to be tempted by the devil. That's what you're filling your life with, was my counsel to the young man. What about the young man who struggles with sexual fantasies? Well, first of all, he probably should not have the Sports Illustrated swimsuit edition there lying on his nightstand. I mean, that's a big... That, <laughs> get rid of that. That's the first thing to go. Remove those things from your life, which may cause you to stumble. Women who struggle with temptation in their marriage probably should not be uh, reading romance novels. Um, they're going to lead you to uh, wish that your marriage was something better. The person striving to remain free from alcohol doesn't stock their refrigerator with beer. Uh, and you know what I'm saying? So if you want purity in your life, you're going to have to fill your, your life with the things that are pure. To become and remain pure, we filter what is allowed into, into our life. Um, what we read, uh, what we watch, what we eat and drink, even where we go. A Christian who desires to be pure will make these sacrifices not because they are prudish, but because they desire purity. In, in, in contrast to what the world suggests, the person who desires purity is not shocked by, by the things relating to sex, but rather they don't want to give lust and temptation a foothold. The images or, uh, or the suggestive scenes that these things have the potential to hold their minds captive. And so, following Paul's uh, advice to Timothy, 2 Timothy 2.22, 2 
Uh, these individuals, they, the world calls them prudish. I say that they desire purity. And so they flee from youth, youthful lusts and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Well, before I end, let me remind you once again that when we do fail to keep ourselves pure, God has put a system in place where our holiness can be restored. This isn't the same as the process for salvation. You do not lose your salvation when you fail to get, uh, when you fail to be pure, you don't. But you do contaminate your holiness and your relationship with the Father is, is limited because of that unholiness or impurity in your life. To restore purity, we are to come to Jesus and confess our act of impurity. And he is faithful to forgive that sin, for he is our advocate. 1 John 2, 1. So purity. Um, purity is, is something that we should strive for. It is holiness. Um, purity is what God desires from us to live a life that is free from contaminated sin. But when we do sin, and we all will, trust me, uh, every one of us at some point in our life and perhaps every day in our life will do something that destroys our purity. That's when you go to Christ, you confess that sin, and he is faithful to forgive that sin. Uh, he wraps us in his robe of righteousness. But purity is something that we should not overlook. We cannot follow the world's standards of purity because what the world says is pure is uh, being dismantled every day. What used to be considered holy when I was a kid is considered to be prudish today. You remember the Dick Van Dyke show? If you've never watched it, they slept in separate beds. Uh, but they were a married couple, but they slept in separate beds. Why? Because their society, the... Uh, the editors of the television shows are like, look, that's that's a bit too too suggestive. Now, I don't even know how far it has gone, but purity is what is expected from us if we are Christians. To be uncontaminated by the sinful things of this world, sinful lusts, sinful deeds, sinful thoughts, sinful actions. We must flee those things to remain pure and holy. You do those things, trust me, you will have a closer, deeper relationship with God than you have ever had before. So next week, we're going to take a look at boldness or confidence as described in other parts of Scripture. I hope you can join us then. Confidence, the topic for next week. Thanks for spending time with me today. My name is Pastor Greg, and you've been watching Transforming the World.